Welcome to Reinvention Ready. I'm your host, Janie Genosis. If you're looking for inspiration to ignite your fires of possibility and make the rest of your life your best life, you're in the right place. I'm delighted to introduce you to my guest today, MJ Bell. Her love of reading and everything magical motivated her to leave her nine to five job and jump head first into a writing career. And even though she started to discover her muse in high school, she didn't truly take on the role of author until midlife. Welcome, MJ. We are so excited to have you with us today. I can't wait to learn from you. Thank you. It's good to be here. So, MJ, when did you realize that you wanted to be a writer? Um, Well, actually, I'm not sure. I don't know if I could tell you exactly when I realized that I wanted to be a writer, but I can tell you exactly when I realized I could write. And that was in high school. I was in my English class and my English teacher um, decided to read my story that I had written, um, the ending, the alternative ending to Silas Marner. He read it out loud to the class. And I wanted to crawl under my desk, but at the same time, the praise that he gave me for my writing stuck with me and um, just blossomed inside me and stayed there all, all until now. I mean, it's still there. And that was when I first realized that, hey, I can do this. I could write if I wanted to. And, and so that was that was the beginning of this. And then after you graduated, did you keep writing? Not really, because you know how, how it is. Life gets in the way, work. I had kids. And all that took precedence. And so I had to push my writing desired onto the back burner. And I didn't really get a chance to to write until my kids got a little bit older. They had nothing to read. So I started writing small stories for them to keep them hopefully into the habit of reading. I never finished one um, because again, life got it, the kids, just too much time that I didn't have for writing. I can relate to that. Definitely. I think a lot of people can, you have these dreams in your heart and then you have to go to work. You have to feed your children and and you do, you put them on the back burner. So you're in the corporate world and you're working. What gave you that spark, that opportunity to start writing again? Um, My kids had grown and um, I was working and not writing because I was working and just um, 9-11 came along and I got laid off couldn't find another job. No one was hiring right after 9-11. So that gave me the perfect opportunity to try it and to see if I really could be the writer that I so wanted to be. And I started my first book, which was um, originally called The Secret Prince of Chirnanook and is now um, Before the Full Moon Rises. And um, I started it, but um, just started it is all I got as far as I got. Okay, so you started it, and then did you get sidetracked again? Did you go back to work again? I did. I got. I went back to work and more jobs, and every time I would go to work, it would get pushed back. So MJ, so you got sidetracked again, but uh, you, this time you didn't give up, and you kept writing. How did you end up finishing your first book? Well, actually, um, anytime I went back to to work, I I put the my book back on the back burner. I pushed it away because I just didn't have time or the energy to do it. But I finally got a job with a great company that they were going through. A, they Right after I started, they, they went through a merger. And when the merger started, that gave all of us at the original company, we had nothing to do. And I had this great boss who just said, you know, gosh, you know, do something, be productive, write, go ahead and write. So every day I would come into work, I would do my one hour, whatever I had to do. And then I would write for the rest of the day. And it was the opportunity that I had to finish my first book. And I think the universe actually placed me there because otherwise I would not have finished the book. I probably would have kept pushing it back, but this almost forced me to write. And once I got it finished, um, it was, it was so wonderful. And now I can't stop writing. That is awesome. That I'm, I'm so, and the world is so lucky that you ended up in that place. And, um, and, you know, obviously no one likes to get laid off, but sometimes those dark times are exactly what we need. That is when the light starts shining through the cracks and the opportunities present themselves. And it is, it is That's those right. times that sometimes 
we don't even realize that's that's what we need. And it's it's always amazing. And I love hearing that from you because I think there's a lot of people out there probably going through some tough times, especially right now. And um, just to give them a little bit of hope that that might be the, the door opening to something much better for you. So um, how did you stay fully motivated? fully committed to writing when dealing with these layoffs and these changes and going back to work and, and you finally finished the book. I mean, what, what motivated you to finish it? It all started with um, J.K. Rowling. Um, she wrote, um, as you know, she wrote Harry Potter and I happen to love Harry Potter. It's still one of my favorite books. But also, um, as I mentioned before, my boy, I have three boys and when they got into fifth or sixth grade, there wasn't anything. This was before Harry Potter. They, they reached that age before Harry Potter. So and there wasn't anything for them to read. And that always bothered me because I wanted them to be as excited about reading as I am. Because reading is like the most important um, subject you can learn in school. It follows you through whatever career you take. Reading is important and you're going to use that ability. So I wanted them to be readers. And um when J.K. Rowling came along and I saw how many children she brought into back to reading, reading had become a lost art. Nobody, nobody was really reading. And she brought all these children into reading, got them so excited about it again. And as I read, as I was reading her, her series and I kept reading and I knew it was going to come to an end that bothered me so much. I kept thinking to myself, gosh, what are these kids going to read when this is finished? Cause I wanted them to keep reading so that is what motivated me the most. The first book I wrote, The Secret Prince of Tir Nanook, which is now the Before the um, Full Moon Rises, when I wrote it, it's the first one of a trilogy. And once you write a trilogy and you have readers and they want more, they want you to write, they want to see what happens to the character next, that kind of motivates you. You don't have time to just lollygag. You have to get the next book done so that you can keep them satisfied and then you have to get the next book done. So um, my readers and J.K. Rowling is what motivated me the most. That's wonderful um, that you, I know, I know exactly how it feels when you're reading a book and it's a trilogy type of a book and you cannot wait for that next episode. And you're so sad when it ends. I, that's how I felt when I read your books. I couldn't wait to read the second one and the third one. And I'm like, is she going to, is there, is there going to be like a, another trilogy after this kind of like star star Wars where you had, you know, the first three, and then you had the, the prequel and all of that. It was, it's always so much fun when you start to care about these characters and you start to really, really want to read more and learn more and, and just lose yourself. Your, your books are the kind of books where people will lose themselves in the story and you can feel yourself you, in the, the secret world where they, the characters live and see things. And it's so, I just love, I just love your book. So I, if you can't tell, I'm, I'm, I'm gushing because, because they're fantastic. But Thank so you. you got that book finished, which is a huge, huge accomplishment. I mean, I think there's a lot of people out there who they know there's a book in them, but just getting to that finish line and saying it's done had to be the best feeling. I can't even explain it. You know, when I finished the first book, I was in the, my home office in the basement of our house. My husband was gone to work. I was all by myself. And I just wanted to celebrate. I mean, I was just like, oh my gosh, I finished. I wanted to dance around the house. I wanted to celebrate with one somebody, but no one was there. So I just sat and cried. I mean, it was like birthing a child. It was the most amazing feeling ever. Wow. Wow. That is, that is so sad that you didn't, but I'm sure you got to celebrate a little bit later, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. absolutely. Okay, good. Because we got to celebrate our wins. It's really, really yes. important because we work hard to get there. And there's so much of the backstory that gets us, you know, nobody's an overnight success. I don't care what you do. And I think the backstory is stuff that people don't often see. So knowing how hard you worked and how long that book was in you is just incredible. Okay, now you've got the book finished right? Step one, but that's a huge accomplishment, but it's sort of like a uh, false summit. You know, I, I'm a, I like to hike and down in Manitou Springs, Colorado, there's a, a, an extreme hike. It's called the incline. And in the extreme hike, it, it goes straight up about 2000 feet. And as you're hiking, you get what you think is to the top. It's called a false summit. And you realize you're only about two thirds of the way up and you've got 
an even steeper, even higher climb to reach the top. And I, I can imagine that writing the book was like that too. You got the, the draft finished, the first draft, it's completed. But then what were your next steps and what did you have to go through to actually become a published author? I was totally naive. All I knew was that I wanted to write a book and I did. But I thought also, once I wrote the book, my job was finished. I was the author. That's all I needed to do. But it is so not the end. Um, I, writing is hard. It's hard to write a book, but it's also hard to get published. And the rejections you get, um, you know, they just kind of, you know, like, it's my baby, you know. Um, but you have to get used to the rejections. They don't really mean anything because the big, big five um, publishing companies, the traditional publishing companies, they only they publish actually publish very few books a year. And it wasn't until Amazon. I know people don't like Amazon, and there are reasons not to like Amazon. But um, the one thing I will always be grateful for to Amazon is that they opened up the publishing world to indie authors. And that's that's me. I'm an in, independent author. I did go the traditional route the, at first, but um, quickly found that wasn't for me at all. Um, and I, but I did win an award, uh, the Mom's Choice Gold Award, um, with my first book, and so that gave me the the nudge that I needed to get out there and put it out again to the world. And I did that by myself. And if it wasn't for Amazon, I wouldn't have been able to do that. But there's, it's hard to write um, and it's hard to keep motivated because you, you know, the rejections, you know, each time you put them, you put you down a little bit and, and you get that imposter syndrome, you know, in your head, you know, you're terrible. Nobody loves you. You know, you're not going to ever do this. But um, I, we all have that. I mean, even J.K. Rowling and Stephen King and the big guys, they all have that. You just have to not listen to it and listen to the dream, follow your dream that you had and that you want so badly and just keep at it. Yeah. Imposter syndrome affects all of us from time to time. I think we never feel good enough, never feel like we're ready, always feel like there's more to learn and there is more to learn. There's but we have to start somewhere. We have to take that first step. So um, would there be any words of wisdom that you would give to authors out there who have completed that book? And self-publishing seems to be the way to go from what I hear from a lot of authors. And it's just easier to get started. What would you share with them, like editing and printing and what kinds of things go into actually getting a book published? It's just like starting your own business. And that's I, that's the one thing I think authors need to, to realize that people who write need to realize that this is a business. Um, even if it's a hobby, it's still a business. You've got to treat your book as a business. And so you wouldn't open up a restaurant without food. And just like you can't write a book without actually getting it edited by a professional editor, not your friends or family. This is somebody who is a professional editor. Um, you have to get a uh, you have to get the cover designer, uh, a professional cover designer. And this, again, is not your kid drawing, you know, stick symbols or whatever. Um, and so uh, there's so much that goes into it. I think the greatest thing an author can do if they have a book that they want to get published is get in with these author groups. Um, I'm here in Colorado. And in Colorado, we have two wonderful, uh, there's probably more, but two wonderful that I know um, of author groups. And one's called the Pikes Peak Writers and one is the Rocky Mountain Fiction Writers. And that is just a group of authors coming together. Um, we have classes, we have workshops, we have conferences, but just that networking and listening, you get to listen to how somebody else did it and all these tips and stuff. And that um, I think is the most important thing is get with a group, get your tribe together, know who your people are and listen to, to their stories, their success stories and their failures. Because you can learn just as much from failures as you can from success stories. That is great advice. I agree with you about the failing. Failing forward is what I keep hearing people yeah. calling it. It's like, and not even really calling it a failure because it's 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 a learning experience. I like to look at failures as learning experiences and hopefully you don't fall too hard in that learning experience so you can get back up and keep moving. Uh, that's that is very cool. And community, 
that sense of community and having people around you that support you and that can help you and giving more than you take too. I think you're in a position now, I appreciate you sitting here telling us about your story because now you can give back and say, Hey, I did this and here's what I, what I faced. And, and, and it, it means so much to people to be able to learn from other people too. So thank you for that. I love it. I love to help other people. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Me too. That's why I'm making these videos because I, I want to help other people as they reach these, these mature years, know that there's a lot of life left in us and a lot we can do. So, yes. so it's, it's, it's all about helping each other in this world. We're all, we're all here. We're all in this together. So, um, so speaking of that and, and helping people and dealing with all of these things um, as you were dealing with your kids growing up and the demanding jobs and putting things on the back burner, there were probably some personal hurdles that you had to overcome too. Some things that um, were in that inner journey to becoming MJ that, that you went through to, to become that author. Tell us a little bit about some of the things that you experienced, sort of those internal roadblocks, maybe those little stumbles that you faced along the way that you were able to overcome as well. Well, I think it's hard to 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 pull your dream out. It, it's a dream, and it's something that you you want so badly, but it's also just kind of a fantasy. You know, you've got that thing in your mind, and it's it sounds so great, but it's scary to start it. You know, because what if I fail? You know, and what if I can't can't actually do? It? What if I'm not a good writer after all? Um, but I think you have to. In, in my case, um, I had the stories inside me, obviously, but, and I also had a muse, um, or I, I like to call him a genius. I also named him Daniel because I talked to him all the time, but um, he, he brought the words out and you have to listen to your inner self, your subconscious, your intuition, whatever you want to call it, and follow, follow their lead because they actually, he knew, he knew I had it in me and he just wouldn't let me stop. And now I can't stop, but he'd give me all these, um, I don't know, it'd be, it would be cool. He would give me signs and that I would pick up on and different things that um, just make me, oh, geez, really? Is that how it's supposed to go? And he would, I would get my characters into, box them into a corner, wouldn't know how to get out of them. And sometimes he wouldn't give me that answer for weeks. But then all of a sudden it would just come to me and it would be like, oh, hey, why? that's so stupid. Why didn't I think of that two weeks ago when I was stressing out so bad about this? So it always works out, but you just have to listen to your inner self. You have to listen to your intuition and follow that lead. They're the ones who know. Don't listen to that always outside world telling you you can't do it. You have to just try. You have to try. Because if you don't try, you'll never know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that listening to intuition is one of the things that is, is difficult. I think for a lot of us, we all have this gift inside us, this intuition, inner knowing, but to hear it, it comes in whispers. It's not something that like, like, tell us a little bit about, can you give us an example of one of the signs that you talked about? One of the things that you were able to tune into that helped you with your book writing? As far as I'm concerned, my first trilogy was Daniel's story. He had it, he knew it, I didn't. Um, in this one in this one episode, like I said, I, I boxed him in a corner in this one episode, um, I, he, you know, for some reason, I thought I, I wrote out that, that this boy had, had received a box from his grandfather, just a small box that fit in his hand. I had no idea what that was box was for. But it, it just like, I need to put that in there. I need to put this box in there. And I did. And then I forgot about it. And then at the end of the book, this boy was boxed into a corner that I could see absolutely no way out. And all of a sudden, one night as I went to bed, because Daniel always talked to me at night, I, I just all of a sudden thought that box, that box is the answer. And it just, it was so amazing to me that I had totally forgot about it. But my intuition, my spirit, my Daniel, my genius, he remembered it. And he, he planted that so that I could get, get my character out of the mess that he was in. And to me, that was just so amazing. I mean, there's so many stories 
Um, another one was um, my character could turn, he's my character is part fae and he could turn into, he could transform into a bird and he transformed into a peregrine, peregrine falcon. And, you know, at the very, the last book of the trilogy, I was trying to get it finished. The imposter syndrome was beating hard on me. It was just like, no one's going to read this. I can't do this. I can't do this. And all of a sudden, I, l I live in the city and all of a sudden a peregrine falcon landed on my fence. Wow. And I'd never seen one and I'd never seen one since. And he wow. sat on my fence and turned around and stared at me for like five minutes. And I was just like, oh my gosh, okay, I get it. I will finish the book. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> that is such a great story. Oh yeah. The, the, the way the universe works sometimes is just, we can't even imagine what those signs are supposed to be. So when you say that Daniel would speak to you at night, was it sort of a feeling that you got, or did you actually like hear somebody say, Hey, you need to write this or talk a little bit about how that worked? Um, no, it was, it wasn't a voice. It was other than it was my own voice, um, just ideas and just thoughts and ideas would just come into my head. Um, and I, at first I, I would, I think, oh gosh, it's great, you know, and, and I'll remember that. I'll remember that the next morning, but so many times I didn't. And so I learned um, I had to keep a notepad by my bed and write that stuff down. Cause if I didn't write it down, there was no guarantee I would, I would keep it for a morning. But it was always just a little, I think Daniel lives in Australia because we were absolutely on different time zones and he would speak to me every night as we, as I went to bed, keep me up for hours, but um, it was great. I needed that. So do you still have your little notebook by your bed? I do. <laughs> yes. I have notebooks everywhere <laughs> because you never know when an idea is going to hit you. And, you know, you think you're going to remember, but as we get older, we don't. And there's too many other things going on. You just, you, you need to write it down. I've learned that too. I, I sometimes I'll have these great ideas. I'll the same thing. Oh yeah. I'll remember that later. And you don't write it down. You don't make a note of it. And you're like, what was that again? What was that? Yeah, what was that great idea that, oh man, I can't remember it now. Yeah. So I'm the, I'm like you, I think I have notebooks all over the house to write down ideas when I'm watching things or listening to things. I jot things down because it spurs an idea in me. And if I don't, write it down it does it's fleeting it's gone so those 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 inspirations those moments your daniel your muse that's so important to listen to that and write that down and pay attention to that i think it's so amazing that you have such a great connection to that that resource and and i'm i'm so glad that you and daniel work together so well i am too <laughs> <laughs> how has your inspiration and motivation change now that you're successful now that you've won awards and you've got do three five books five yes. books out now yes. so yes um what's changed about your inspiration and motivation now well now I, I know that I can write and um I it was always my dream and I, I just can't stop writing you know it's just I don't know what what motivates me now it's just the need to get these stories out of of me you know and get them out to the world um the world is is not in a good place right now and i write magic and fantasy and sci-fi and stuff and i just feel that the and especially i write for teens and young adults and i think they need a little bit of magic and fantasy in their life and just an escape to get away for a, a day couple days however long it takes them to read the book but I, I just want to give that to, to the world and, and share it with the world. I think it's important to, to keep the magic going. That's great. And yes, please keep the magic going. We need, we need your gifts and your magic. Um, so tell us what superpowers you have that have really helped you on this journey. I'm, I'm a little bit OCD even on research. I am just the greatest researcher I think out there. I can research everything. Um, and I, I just, I have to research everything. I write fantasy and sci-fi and, and stuff, which is everybody thinks, well, why do you need to research? But to me, I still need to bring some reality into researching. It's like I couldn't write my time travel until I found an actual um, concept that could, could work for a time machine. 
And, um, and that wasn't easy, let me tell you, because time machine obviously don't, don't exist, but um, there actually is a man who's, who's building one. And I loved his concept. And I thought, well, well I, he says it will work. He's a physicist. So why not? So um, I used it. <laughs> I used his time, his concept. So I, I liked research, but um, also just, again, listening to, listening to that inner, inner voice, you know, and, and trying it. I think that's another superpower, just, just believing in yourself and knowing that if you fail, so what, you know, you didn't have it before, so it's not going to change your life any, you know, you can still go on. So um, I think that those are my superpowers. Those are good superpowers. And I love the research in your books, because like you say, it's sci-fi, you could totally pull things out of the air and make things up, but it gives it a much deeper sense of reality for the readers when there is actually something you've researched. You know, I'm, I'm not a physicist. I don't know what my time machine would look like. I would definitely appreciate though, if I was a physicist or someone who had a scientific background, having that story make sense a little bit more. Cause yeah. you know, you'll watch stuff sometimes or read stuff and you'll be like, that's, ah, they, they don't know what they're talking about. So <laughs> your books, I think it's important that you, and I know you research places too. Um, and, and so if people have been to those places, the images that you share are going to be very vivid and they're going to fit with what other people have seen, which is, which is important. I think it's important when people write that they, they're, they're clear and they're giving great information along with a great story. So um, what do you wish you knew when you were starting your author's journey that you could share with other budding emerging authors today that might help them? There's a great community of, of authors out there and they're all, most of them, I shouldn't say all, most of them are very helpful. But there are some people out in the world, as we all know, who are very negative and um, can really put you down. I wish I would have known that not every, not to listen to everybody. Not everybody is right. Not everybody likes the same books. I mean, obviously, if there's so many, a variety of so many different kinds of books out there. And that um, I, th I think just, I wish I hadn't have listened to these people and stuff. I think I would have been able to write so much more, write faster, um, write better if I hadn't have gotten sidetracked with these negative people and negative thoughts. So just fill your, fill your, your space with positivity and with the good people and don't let anybody inside your circle that is, that's got all these negative feelings and that's, that's great advice. And almost going back to your superpower of listening to that inner knowing, when you start to surround yourself with the right people, I think there's feelings even in your body, in your, in your gut, in your heart. And you have to pay attention to that and not just what you hear in your head. When you were around these people that you wish you hadn't brought in, what was it that you, that you maybe didn't listen to where you're listening more to your head or not enough to your heart? What, what, what can they listen to to make sure that they're surrounding themselves, these, these budding authors with people that are going to help them and support them rather than drag them down? There's huge communities of authors and any, I probably, probably every city has them. And so hook up with them, but just because they're an author and published doesn't mean that they have, they know everything. And so I wish I would have known that, not everybody who's giving me advice knows what they're talking about or knows my situation and knows what's going to work for me. Um, like outlining, um, they tell you, you have to outline your book out, you know, get the whole thing out in your head before you start. Well, that's not the way I write. And um, I did it. I tried it with my first book and then it was, it was a waste of time because my book ended up nothing like the outline, your characters take off on their own. They have their own minds and they lead you to through the story. And so I think just be careful of who you listen to, make sure it's they're the right people giving you the right information, just like everything else. Um, you have to be selective of what advice you take from who. 
That's really true. And sometimes it's not easy to, to really to listen to that too. And as we said earlier, that, you know, when we make mistakes, we learn from those mistakes. So, you know, I think that's great advice to, to tell people to be a little bit more careful and maybe learn to, you know, put the blinders up now. And then when something really doesn't feel right, somebody gives you advice and it's, it's not, it's not what you know in your heart. I think you still have to follow your heart and follow your dreams. And that's fascinating that you don't write with an outline. And I think that's great advice to people because that's what I hear all the time too. Yes. You have to do your introduction, how the book's going to start, where it's going to go, how it's going to end and outline all these different things. And it seems like, as I talk to you, it sounds almost like your stories blossom and unfold more like a flower, you know, with a bud. And then, and then all of a sudden they just, they flower and become these, these beautiful stories. And even you don't always know where they're going, which, which oh. is fun. I never, I never know where they're going. I just, I follow, I follow my characters. I follow Daniel, but another piece of advice I'd, I'd like to give is um, to new writers is do not judge your success on someone else's because we're all on different journeys and we all have different goals. And just because some author is putting out a book a month, it doesn't mean you have to. And don't even try if that's not your style or whatever. Just don't judge your success on somebody else's because, you know, I'm, I'm not huge like J.K. Rowling. I never will be huge like J.K. Rowling. And that's okay because that's not my goal. I just want as many kids as I can get to read my book. So just just take in the, the little successes, the little victories you get, and just be happy with those and rejoice in those. Great advice. Don't compare yourself that's where that imposter syndrome really starts to creep in too. When you start to compare yourself to where someone else is on their journey because they're different journeys and Mm -hmm. we never know where our journey is going to lead. So, you know, if you had compared yourself and said, Oh, I'm not good enough, we wouldn't have your books. So that's great advice for people out there who are maybe looking at other authors and going, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Um, And I think there's a difference between, knowing that you need some skills and some knowledge, like if you want to do brain surgery, you probably should go to school and become a doctor and learn about that. But when you're talking about the creative process, like writing or becoming an artist or musician, it's a little bit of a different process. And I think doing it is the most important thing that you can do. Would you agree that Absolutely. Absolutely. And every book, I think um, my writing gets a little bit better in every single book. So the more you do, the the better you're going to be. And yes, definitely. Yeah. And so let me ask you, this is just kind of a silly question, but um, we all know that as we get older, I've heard the saying that getting old isn't for sissies. And I would have to agree with that. (laughs) We start to have aches and pains and things that just happen to us when we're older that, you know, we we deal with it. We move on. We have to be pretty tough as we grow older. But um, what do you like better about yourself today than about MJ when you were in your, say, 20s or 30s? I like my confidence. I, I have, I'm confident of what I can do now, and which I wasn't before. So I'm confident of that I can do whatever I put my mind to um, really I've and my knowledge, the knowledge I've gained has helped me do that. So um, just trying things and seeing if they, you know, successful take my successes as, you know, as victories. And if I fail, no, that's okay. I've just, I'm okay with it now. It's not that big a deal. Life goes on, but I think I've, I've really gained a lot of confidence um, over the last over the last few decades, which I'm very grateful for. That's great advice. Great advice for those 20 and 30 year olds out there that might be listening to this. Yeah, definitely. MJ, can you share? So, in the last few years, what new mindset, habit, or behavior has most improved your life? Well, I found um, the one thing I found, and it's, it took me forever, and I've just found it within the last few years, but I'm the most productive if I get up, as soon as I get it from, from um, bed at, in the morning, that I get right to my job, or right to work, right to writing. If I don't, I can't produce anything. The words don't come. So I've learned that I have to, my, you know, so I have to get up, sit down on my computer, and the words just flow. And that's probably because Daniel's been feeding them to me all night. I don't know. But um, it used to be, and, and like I said, when I was working, I just 
couldn't write. And that was probably because I'd have all that other stuff come into my head during the day. All My head was just full of everything else, emails, voicemails, texts, all that stuff. And it was just too full to sit, to have the words come out. Um, so now, as long as I get up and write first thing in the morning, I'm, I can do it. I can get it done. I'm hearing a lot more and more about, about morning routines. And I know for me personally, I'm much more of a night owl than a morning person. Um, but I have learned that if I don't get up and do the things in the morning that I absolutely must do, one of them for me is to meditate. And the other one is to work out. So if I can get those two things done before I get dressed, even, you know, into anything besides my exercise clothes, before I move and get distracted and other things for the day, if I can get those two things done, it's so much better and they're off my plate. And so I, I love that you are a morning writer and I keep hearing that from other people too, that if they get up in the morning, do what they need to do, whether it's writing, whether it's, you know, putting that to-do list together so their day is organized, whatever it is, use your morning time as productively as you can. And even for someone who's not a morning person, I would, I would say, give it a shot, give it a try. There are different times, everybody has their own time. Um, Diana Gobledon, who wrote the Outlander series, she gets up at 1230 in the morning. She goes to bed at nine, then gets up at 1230 and writes until four and then goes back to bed. And that's her schedule. That's what she's found her. She's most productive. So we all have our own own area of time that's productive. And so you just, you know, I found mine was morning. So everybody, you just need to find and realize what yours is. Keep trying all different things you need to, to find out what yours is. That's really true. Um, I, like I said, I'm a night owl and, you know, but, but I still find that, that for me morning, if I get some of those things done in the morning, maybe the things I'm least likely to want to do later in the day or most likely yeah. to put off as the day goes on, that's better. Um, that's better for me to get it done because then I can check it off my list and move on with other things. So yeah, that's yeah, true. Uh, fascinating though. I don't know if I could, I'm a night owl, but I don't think I could get up at 1230 and then work <laughs> until four. So you're right. Everybody is different and you got to, again, we're giving our words of wisdom here, but it might not fit for you if you're watching this and you're going, Oh, you know, maybe you like that idea better, or maybe your time is three o'clock in the afternoon to get things done. Yeah, so that's right. pay attention to when your, your peak time is. And I've also heard, and I'd love to do more research on this though, but that we have different peaks during the day for different things. And that certain parts of the day, certain parts of our brain are more active. And so it might be something to pay attention to. Maybe you want to be making phone calls either in the morning, or maybe you want to be writing in the afternoon or whatever it is that you're doing in your own life. There might be better times of the day to do something, but not necessarily everything. So yeah. um, I think that's something that I might like to learn more about. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. So MJ, are there any parting words that you would like to share today with our audience? They say that dreams are for the young, but um, I don't agree with that. I think dreams are dreams and everybody has them and everybody can bring them to reality if they just try and just follow your dream. Don't let it go to waste. Um, it was put there for a reason and the universe is telling you that it is put it there and is telling you that it's what it wants you to do. And so you got to try it. Just don't ever, don't ever think you're not good enough or not young enough or not productive enough or whatever, um, try it. Just, it can't hurt. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dreams are not just for the young. They're for all of us and keep dreaming. I love it. Thank you so much for that. So MJ, how can people learn more about you and find and purchase your wonderful books? Well, I have a website. It's mj-bell.com. Um, I'm also a Facebook page, um, which is MJ Bell Author. Um, Instagram is MJ Bell Author as well. And then my books are available. Um, the ebook and the print book are both available on Amazon.com. One of my books, The Time Travel, which is this one right here, um, is also an audio book. And it's available on Audible.com. And also iTunes also carries it on Apple. My print books are also available, barnesandnoble.com, Tattered Cover, which is a local bookstore here in Denver, and um, a lot of libraries have it as well. That is 
great. Sounds like your book is available pretty much everywhere people are going. And I'm glad to hear that they are in libraries. And I always encourage people to call their librarian if they want a book and they can't afford to buy it. The library oftentimes will order it and, and put that book in the shelves. And who knows who else will be able to read it too. So you have a new book coming out now. Is this going to be a new series? Uh, the end of March, I put out the first book of a new series. I don't know yet how long it's going to be, if it's going to be a whole huge series or if it's going to be, but it's, it's going to be at least two, or probably three, at least three. Um, and it's called The Guardian's Light, The Rise of the Three. Um, and it's loosely based off of the Sumerian myth of the two alien races that came down to Earth and created humans. Um, and then had a war over who was going to control the earth. And so um, that's three kids get lured into a, um, a reality show. That's not exactly what they think it's going to be. <laughs> and it's great. I, I've read the first. And again, now I'm in that stage. Where I can't wait to get the second one. I can't wait to see where this story goes. MJ, I am honored to interview you and I really appreciate you taking the time to share your wisdom and your story with us today. Thank you so much. I enjoyed this so much and I love talking to fans. So go onto my Facebook page and write me a note and I'd love to hear from you. That's right. It's, and, and again, thank you so much. Your books are a gift to the world and, and I, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, MJ and I would love to hear from you. We talked about so many great things today, like imposter syndrome and following your heart, building community. And I'm curious, what's your biggest takeaway from today's interview? Leave a comment below and let us know. And if you enjoyed this interview, subscribe. And even better, sign up for my weekly Reinvention Ready newsletter at reinventionready.com. You'll receive all sorts of great tips from real people like MJ to help you on your own reinvention journey. The world needs special gifts that only you can share. It's not too late to make the rest of your life your best life. Start today. Thank you for watching. See you soon.